Hi guys, good morning, good morning. Dr. Wendy Dearborn here from the Laws of Attraction in Action. Well, and you, of course you can find me on Facebook and the Laws of Attraction in Action.com. Well, this morning what I want to talk about is how to say you're sorry even if you're still mad. So I'm going to start out by saying this. If you have had some sort of upset with somebody and you are still mad, understand clearly that you are the one who's being impacted. You are the one, if you're carrying this anger around, you are the one whose body it is acting out on. You are the one who's having the mental anguish about it. And you might think that you're not, but as long as you're angry, as long as you're angry, there is going to be a reaction. Your body reacts to anger in specific and unique ways to who you are. So it's really important to understand that anger and being mad, even if you feel that you are right, even if you feel that you are right, being angry and staying mad truly doesn't serve you well. Okay, so how to say you're sorry to somebody even though you are mad. And I've I've got some notes this morning. I've got some notes this morning. So one of the things that I would say is, especially I'm going to talk about couples, but this is not um, not just for couples, okay? This is for any kind of relationship this can be applied to. So what happens when um, people don't communicate effectively? There's a dis disintegration and an undermining of our our ability to communicate and then what happens is we start exhibiting irrational behavior and that irrational behavior can be an argument it can be uh, the cold shoulder it can be the slamming of doors it can be anything anything that is going to express how you feel it can be a knockdown drag out that can be a verbal thing or it can degenerate into something that's physical but what happens is communication and the ability to express oneself has ceased done it's finished and then you try to find an outlet to do this and again it erupts into something that really is usually very unpleasant not only for the people involved but for you on a personal level as I started out saying even if you feel that you are right even if you feel um, you know, that you have righteous right, rightness on your side. Even if you, even if you feel vindicated, whatever it is, you're the one who's carrying it and it's going to enact on your body. So that, that going on to say that is when cooler heads prevail, which cooler heads do prevail and, you know, in hindsight, which definitely is a new viewfinder lens on, on the situation, or in order sometimes to make peace, because sometimes there are other members involved. So in order to make peace, an apology can be made. And again, when it's time to apologize, this too can go radically wrong. This too can throw everything back to where it was. This too can absolutely annihilate the process. And when I say annihilate the process, what I mean by that is when you actually go to um, apologize, there are some important criteria that need to be in place. You know, you can't, okay, there are some, there are some important criteria that need to be in place. And one of the most important things you can do when you are apologizing, own your feelings. Okay, own your feelings. You have to own your feelings. And let's face it, if there's been an argument or there's been something that's happened, all the players kind of know. Everybody has their take on it. Everybody knows what happened, what's happened. They were there. They were there. 
okay so you have to own your 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 feelings so okay um owning your feelings by the way doesn't let me just say this negate or condone somebody's bad behavior it doesn't negate or condone somebody's bad behavior it, it, it doesn't this is about you an apology saying sorry is about you it's not about them it's about you you see guys as I said earlier if you don't if you hang on to stuff if you hang on to stuff you're the one who is being um, uh, held in bondage that person might have gone on their merry little way couldn't even care less but yet still you're hanging on to this stuff and it's you who's going to be affected so okay let's dissect this uh, uh, another way and as I said to you earlier I've got my little notes here so let's dissect this another way when someone says to you I'm really sorry that I shouted like that but you always make me so mad <laughs> right there right there there are three things three things that I'm going to talk about only three things three things wrong three things did I do that I did that didn't I three things wrong with that uh, that apology okay so again I'm sorry that I shouted at you but you always make me so mad number one shifting the blame shifting the blame for your behavior onto someone else Shifting the blame for your shifting the blame for you shouting onto someone else. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. You are responsible for how you feel. Only you can be responsible for how you feel. Number two, the fact how you act and react in any given situation is a choice. You get to choose if you are mad or not. You get to choose if you are sad or not. You are the one who gets to choose how you express that. So if you shout, slam the doors, cry, whatever it is, you get to choose how you are going to express that. So you cannot move that blame onto somebody else. That's not how it works. And number three, take, not taking responsibility for your actions in whatever given situation is only going to add another incendiary device or another incendiary thing into an already inflammatory um, situation. You see, what that will do is create more irrational behavior. So when you say something like, I'm so sorry that I shouted like that, but you always make me mad, you're not giving an apology. Outside of all the, the, the three things that I mentioned, you're assigning blame and you are giving an explanation. That's not an apology. You're giving an explanation why you went off, why you lost it, why you slammed the door, why you were crying. You're giving an explanation. You're not giving an apology. So to... Actually, and, and on top of it, let me just say this, guys, on top of it, people know at an intrinsic level what an apology sounds like. You see, because everybody knows that you or I can't, you can't make me feel bad. I can only make me feel bad. And even though people don't talk about this, people know this at an intrinsic level, at a deep core, subconscious level. I can't make you feel any way. You're the one who takes that information and processes it and makes yourself feel that way. And then you react on it. You see, guys, I know I've said this before. And I'm going to continue to say this. You cannot make anybody do anything. And nobody can make you do anything. You do whatever you're doing through choice. You do whatever you're doing through choice. Whether this is under duress or not, you do it through choice. You cannot make anybody feel a way. What I'm saying is short. You can't control anybody. Because I'm here to tell you.
that if you could, your whole life would be different. It would be manifesting differently for you. Because you would be able to control every aspect of what people do. And we cannot control what people do. So, okay, guys. That being said, what's a better way to apologize? A better way to apologize is, guys, you've got to own it. Okay? You have to own how you feel. So, a better way to apologize is simply this. I'm sorry I shouted at you like that. I always make myself so mad in these situations. Or I always make myself so mad when I hear you say that. This is ownership. And guys, can you... Can, d d first apology, just so we're clear. First apology is this. I'm so sorry that I shouted at you like that, but you always make me so mad. No, no, no. No, no, okay? Second apology, the way that it should be. I'm really sorry that I shouted at you like that. I always make myself so mad when I hear you say that or in these situations. So guys, it's ownership. That's ownership. An apology like that is not accusatory. You see, when you say to somebody, you know, you always make me, you always make me, you've shifted the blame and you're accusing them of doing something that intrinsically we as humans know is impossible. And so therefore, yeah, people, they, you're going to get their back up. So own what it is that you are feeling. Own your feelings. I always get mad. I always get angry. I always um, cry. I always get my feelings hurt. You can't say to somebody, you always hurt my feelings. That, it just doesn't compute. So whenever you're making an apology, guys, and I'm going to wrap it up. Whenever you're making an apology, and you start out by saying, you always give yourself a checkup from the neck up and change that to, I always feel yada, yada, yada. And I'm not talking about not... Um, I'm not talking about condoning anybody's behavior towards you. What I'm talking about is owning your part of how you feel in any given situation that has spiraled out of control. Because any given situation that you have been in that has spiraled out of control is a result of an action that you have taken. And it might be a reaction to an action, but it's a result of an action that I got the thumbs up, whoever, yay. It's a, it's a result of an action that you have taken. So guys, check yourself and recognize that you have to take ownership of your life. The only person that you can control is you. And if you're walking around mad, pissed off, angry, upset, hurt, based on what somebody else has done, and they've gone on their merry little way, they've gone on their merry little way, you're the person who is physically, mentally, and emotionally being, um, being impacted, and not necessarily in a good way. So guys, when you are making an apology, own it. Don't transfer the blame. Don't transfer the blame. Don't transfer the blame. Know that it's a choice how you react in any given situation and take responsibility for how you are showing up in the apology. Guys, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn.